call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this 8th day of February 2022, a little after 5 p.m. Uh, I'm going to ask uh, Larry Morphew to lead us in a prayer and a place of the flag. Lord, we just come to you tonight thanking you, Lord, for your many blessings. Lord, we just ask you to be with us tonight and give us the strength and the courage to make the proper decisions that would be pleasing to you and help us to get over this COVID, Lord, and just continue to bless our people and be with us, lead and guide us in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Gentlemen, you have before you the January 25th, 2022 minutes, as well as the correction on the December the 14th, uh, or actually it's addition, correction and addition to the December 14th meeting. Motion, motion second. about the Larry account, second by Jason Bull. Is there any discussion or any other corrections or additions? Questions? Discussion, corrections, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The minutes are approved. Next, you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers. I make a motion to Motion to Sam Small. Second. Second by Larry Morphy. No late list, right? No late list, correct? Correct. Questions or corrections? I mean, discussion. Actually, what I'm supposed to say. Any discussion or questions on the bills, claims, payments, and transfers? We have the motion by Sam Small, second by Larry Morphew. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. The bills are paid. Before you, you have the treasurer's uh, January 2022 financial statement. Make a motion to acknowledge. Motion by. Uh, Joe Barnes to acknowledge the receipt of those uh, of the of the financial statement. Second. Second by Sam Small. <coughs> Is there any discussion or questions for Ann? Uh, okay. We have the clerks. 2022 financial statement. I make a motion. Motion by Joe. To acknowledge. Second, second by Larry uh, Count. Or whoever. Yeah. Um, is there any uh, any uh, discussion or uh, questions on that? Joe, who did you get a second from? Larry Count. Okay. I could have got it anywhere, but that's when I say everybody's second. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. The clerk's uh, financial report is is acknowledged the receipt. We have acknowledged the receipt of it. The sheriff's year end fee account. Do you need a motion on that? Yes. So uh, motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Sam Small. Is there any questions or uh, anything about it? The sheriff is here if you need to ask him anything about it. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Uh, next, we have the ordinance 2022 3. That's the interlocal agreement uh, for the original jail that we're working on. Um, this will be the first reading. The second reading will be in the newspapers and all that. I'll make a motion. Motion by uh, Sam, second by Larry Cam. Yeah, it's 22-3, ordinance 22-3. Yes. And this is for the jail board, right? Yeah. yeah this is just kind of to create the board. Um, I think Butler County and Edmondson County were supposed to pass similar ordinances. Uh, we'll pass this ordinance, and then what we'll also ask you to do is, is to entertain a motion for the Green River Regional Detention Center Management Agreement, which it's then given that board some powers be able to take some steps that the state will, will, will need in order for us to even kind of get the ball rolling. So we'll do the ordinance first and then we'll need 
the approval of, uh, upon motion and second for the management agreement to be entered into. That'll be all the accounting reporting. Okay. Yes, all, it, it, and that'll be on the presumption that all the accountants are going to do those, okay. take those same actions. But right now the ordinance is on the uh, table, so <coughs> we'll call that Miranda. Barnes? Yes. <coughs> Johnston? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Pull up. Yes, and the, the, you're saying so not one of the counties back out of this and they'll sign it, so this is null and void. Pretty much. Well, Pretty much. The, the, one of the things that the counties wanted in the, in the management agreement anyway was language that would state that we're not binding ourselves or, or the, or the uh, uh, we're not binding ourselves in any way until we know what that number is to at least construct the jail. Okay. So, so all the counties wanted to make sure they weren't binding themselves Right. Because the number, no telling what the number yeah. could be now. Right. Okay. okay. On the uh, uh, management agreement, the regional. Where is it? It'd be the uh, Green River Regional Detention Center, Center Management Agreement. So, motion by Larry Camp. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Now, you said Justin, that one would give them some powers. What kind of powers? Do you well, have? what what. What's going to happen is, is that the judge, along with the other two counties, would set up the board. And right. then this board, what it, what it states, and, and again, uh, the very first section is the contingency that <coughs> the counties are not binding themselves to anything until uh, uh, the expenses and everything are determined and whether that be appropriate. But this board will then start to meet. They would have the authority the then degrees. to, uh, this is the upon the, 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 the court approving, uh, obtain order. services this for an architect, obtain order. services for Major. studies that may need to be uh, possibly take action and, and um, so any options to purchase it. Taking a lot of the, the steps that you saw how long it took for us to get the management agreement. Right. This board is going to take is going to is going to be the ones. Uh, they're going to be the group that is going to try to. But it's clear that everything will still have to run through everybody's courts. It, it's a finalized pretty much everything and the outdoor <coughs> of the expenses. Hiring, paying, <coughs> the services. We'll prove the figure. Of, of the, the Once the uh, figure is approved, we are okay with the well, money. I'm talking about even like yeah. contractors right. or anything just oh, yeah. coming out there. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, it, 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 it allocates those expenses should all the courts approve. Uh, uh, count, uh, Ohio County paying 50. Right. Edmondson paying 25, Butler paying 25, and that was based on prison population. Right. Uh, on that, you know, the study that we originally received. And they'll be reviewed in three years. So land purchases or land agreements or anything that's got to run through the court. Oh, absolutely. Because okay. the court would have to get it appraised and everything of that thing. Okay. Okay. Uh, Judge, you know whether anybody, any of the other two courts have passed the uh, resolution? We think they have, but we couldn't get that verified today because okay. the court meetings were yesterday. Okay. Uh, Again, all in favor say aye. 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 Polls like that. That's passed. Next. You reckon we want to do a roll call on that, Justin? Uh, probably yes. Uh, I would say so, Judge. Yeah, just to roll be on, just to be on the safe side. Yeah. And the judge, I've got one officer that has somebody that has a question, so I'll be right back. I just have to okay. answer that. Okay. Barnes. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Town. Yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. <coughs> yes. Okay, the next one, uh, I'm hoping that Joe Barnes will want to make this, uh, because it's his district. The governor has given us a hundred and, work that figure again, Sixty-seven thousand eight hundred and ten dollars Okay, and uh, we're going to pay a, a portion of Pond Run Road with that money that he's given us. So we need to pass this agreement and uh, this resolution and, and Miranda's going to pass it around all of us that sign. Uh, so, Joe? I'll make a motion. I second it. Motion and by Joe Barnes, second by Larry Morphy. This is uh, something we've been working on for a while with the, uh, with actually the uh, Division of Fish and Wildlife and, and everywhere, you know, try to come up with some money to, uh, to utilize that road better so we can utilize those facilities down there as far as Fish and Wildlife uh, area for, uh, all the sporting goods that goes on down there, fishing, hunting. Joe, how much more would it take to do the whole? I don't know the, 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 the figure thing. here. I've got to, I've got to run it down on the road uh, mileage, and then also, you know, this was based on Scotty's bid yes. uh, back in uh, 
sometime last year. Well, so we have to see what the, the uh, if there's any changes in anything by the time we actually get ready to block top. Right. But that was good that we got this because of the General Assembly in 2021, it will really limited the amount of money the governor had for his discretionary fund for roads. So we really done something getting that. I would like to know, kind of like Larry, I'd like to know how much more, you know. We'll study that. Yeah. It's got the mileages on here, but it's, uh, uh, I know what the miles. That's a good start. I know Joe has really worked with fish and wildlife and trying to get the extra money. Yeah, well, we didn't get anything from them. This all comes from the yeah, Grand We possibly could get something from them a little later. Right, right. Go ahead and uh, he's, he's passed it down. So let's just say A on that, I on that, and then uh, y'all are going to sign it. So that'll be your call. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like sign. Motion carries. He's pasted it down through that sign. No, that was it. I, I put it on there just in case we didn't because we didn't get it last time. I still have received it. Okay. Uh, it's the way the cookie crumbs. <laughs> you want me to mix it up and start that way next time? <laughs> I don't think it's changed up on the boats. I signed that. Uh -huh. Are you two guys got signed that on Pine Island? Oh, so this is not. This is. We used to change it every time, but hey, we stuck. Black. Black. The record stuck on this. Uh, black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, let's move on to, uh, there is no truck bed, so no that's on there. Bed. And we, in case uh, Denny came back with his folks and all that, we had done there. Kate the did. Charlie Shields, you tell us about the Rough River Drainage Project, mm -hmm. and uh, you'll introduce Corey Elder in your talks. All right, uh, first of all, let me give you some FEMA update. As of today, we've had 243 people to register for FEMA. I know there's a lot of red tape in it. Uh, Y'all still see anybody that needs something? Please tell them to register. They ain't going to guarantee they're going to get something, but if they don't register, that's where all the money is tied to. How much longer before? To the 11. We got to the 11 to get people registered. That's we, for their first sign up. After that, the appeals and all that's still on the table. Uh, I get the first one done. That, exactly right. We had a young lady who got a little bit of money. She didn't think it was enough. We had. FEMA, she got her name to us. We had FEMA call her and come find out all it was was missing the paper from insurance. Then she wound up getting a pretty good little chunk of money from them. So please tell them if they have any problems, come call me, come to my office, I'll come to them. Whatever we gotta do to get them registered. Uh, with that being said, judge called, we got the NCRS, National Resources Convention Server. They come down, we went on the, all the blue waterways. Uh, they've almost guaranteed us money that's going to help us clean out Rough River and the creek up there on 69 going back before you get to Coy St. Clair. Now, the problem is it's going to be April or May before we get the money. So anybody who's going to go in there and clean out their own ditches, Army Corps ain't going to say nothing about it. They're, they're turning the head. And that's what I've told everybody who's up there. If you want to clean out your own ditch, you go ahead. But we're eventually going to get money to come and clean all that out. Uh, I wish Mr. Haney was here, but uh, we're going to get money to help him out and the bridge up around Shreve's Road project. So we're we're going to get that taken care of too through the net in CRS. So I know there's been a lot of misception out there with people <coughs> saying they can can't clean out ditches. I'm here to tell you on record, if they want to clean them out, let them clean them out, and that's what I'll tell them. Uh, Nobody has called me because if they call me, I'll tell them to go do it. They got the equipment to get it done. But that is, we are going to get money probably by April, May to get that done. Certain sections of the river or just what everywhere is there's a drainage. We what we did was the other day, we went up there and we hit all the hot spots we know. Okay, after that we flew it. They flew the the rough river. They found some more down in Joe's area in the center town area that I didn't know about. So we didn't put that on there. And what they're doing, anywhere there's a bridge that could be impacted, they're going a half a mile each direction. And anything in that, that's number one priority. 
then they go from that, that's, that's an A category. B category is a stoppage that's eating out somebody's cropland. A's first, B's second. Yeah. We've got several of that, don't we? We've got several of that. Plus danger in the roads. Yeah, and we know one of the biggest ones, Summers are over here on, on Barnes Station back there under the 165 interstate, and that's going to be part of the number one priority. And the way this is going to work is once we get the money, it'll run through the fiscal court. We will sub out a contractor, and all the money will run through us to pay the contractor. How does that work, Turner? Do you, do they, do you, if you get a contractor, how many, how many dollars are we talking about? Do you have any idea? I don't have no or idea. Is there a limit on it, cap on it, or anything like that? No, it'd be uh, federal rates on all of it. <laughs> and what the NCRS will give us a, pro, a number. They will also have a guy assigned to me. And we'll go out there and we'll, we'll sub out the contract. Then these guys will have X amount of time to get that done. As long as they're happy and I'm happy, we'll sign off on a ticket and then we'll pay them. So, on the bridge on Street Road, John, <coughs> is that, how's that money going to affect that bridge? Well, we're hoping it gets replaced. Yeah. I know it's on the list to get replaced. <coughs> we're hoping it's going to get moved up because with this being the tornado and it's affecting that, uh, we was up there the other day for everybody. You can already see with the debris back and back up in there. Yeah. So uh, we got pictures of it. So I put that in really high category. Yeah. It, it may not make the number one, but it'll be. No, the number one's at the interstate. <coughs> Did they fly the whole Rough River? Ohio County, yes. Because <coughs> I, I know that all that in Center Town would be washing down that way. Right. They flew from Rough River all the way down to when it went out. Okay. Then we've actually flown some drone footage of the <coughs> of it. We got better with that being said. Because okay. we didn't have that before, right? No, we did okay. not. And also, uh, I don't know if any of y'all are aware of the Eagle View, the pictometry program we got here. Jason Chen called the people. The tornado happened on December 10th. On December 12th, we <coughs> flew the county. So you can actually see if my house got hit, you can see the before and after pictures. So that's helped out tremendous with FEMA, NCRS, and all that to identify stuff. So we had that done. Yeah. Uh, one other thing for y'all being aware of, the Rochester Dam project. It's done. Uh, we're going to finalize everything Thursday at 10 o'clock on that. We will be setting up a, a grand opening as soon as the weather breaks and all that. But all that project is done down at the Rochester Dam. Uh, that is going to be ongoing. Probably uh, next month we'll have an actual deed in our name. The Rochester Dam Commission will have that in our name next month. That's what they're telling us. Charlie, did they put a, a float ramp in down there? No, we cannot until that gets in our name. Once that gets named, I already got Fish and Wildlife on board. They are going to pay so much. And <clears throat> I talked to Nick Woolen, and Nick says our guys can do the rest to help make the road back there. So we should have it as soon as that gets in our name. We're going to do it off where you go off that lane there to the right. Correct. Well, we can't go to the right or up on top because that's an Indian historical, all that stuff up there. But as you go down, uh, we'll be going straight down over the, back down the bank side, on the downside, and that's where the ramp will be. It'll be similar to Rockport's ramp. That's what we based good. it off of. Because now if we have any rescues, we can go down the river or up the river. Right. Correct. Because uh, only ramp we got in down rivers Rockport and anytime anybody wants to go I got the keys to the gate so I'll be more than welcome to give anybody the key to the gate they way they can walk right there and see it Charlie yes ma'am I'm the spin stuff so we'll have to bid everything out contractors no two different things NCRS funds we'll have to bid that no FEMA's already done no more than five uh, I'm glad Ann's mentioned that the FEMA cleanup we've as of today, we've handled all the debris, vegetation. Tomorrow, we start seeing the household. So, and I've told everybody, and I keep on putting out radio everywhere, if they can get it to the roadside, we'll take it. And a lot of people have done that. And some gets it close as they can, then we'll go get it. So, anybody that's in an impacted area, if they can get it to the roadway, please call us, let me know, so I can get the guys to go do it. Then we're handling all that in-house. Our county road department's done all that. Well, we want to. We also want to thank the the group that come out of Owensboro. Yeah, um, Regional Wastewater. Right. Them guys are spectacular. They sent two groups, 
two tracks with trucks, a mini, a, long, a big excavator, six guys, and they was here for two or three weeks. Then we had a bunch of volunteers everywhere. I can't name everybody, but right. but them guys, they said, and once they was done here, they went to Muhlenberg County. And there are people over in Owensboro said they're going to be there till volunteering their stuff till everybody's done. They did a great job. They come in there and cleaned up Chandra Loop and uh, Matanzas Road. And uh, it, that allowed us to keep the throat department instead of breaking them apart. They did a great job. And also, I don't know if it's on this bills and claims or next bills and claims, you're going to see a pretty big chunk of Republic for dumpsters. And what the judge is gracefully enough, he we provided dumpsters on up and down for people to throw stuff in. So anybody pretty much called, we, we got them dumpsters bought. So you're going to see probably a $2,300, $2,400 to $400 bill on that for dumpsters. We take care of That's all I got. Anybody got any questions on that? Thanks for that, Charlie. Okay. Is that uh, on the purchase Thanks, line? Thanks, Charlie. Is that on the list? <clears throat> on what? That purchase line? It is. It's the top of the list. I said, top of what, maybe the next Some year or so? I'm hoping soon. I'm hoping this calendar year. Okay. Um, Corey, you want to? Got anything for us? Um, all I was really just going to echo a lot of what Charlie said about the FEMA, uh, making sure everyone applies and um, um, uh, files an appeal if they um, don't get a satisfactory result. Um, you know, he said uh, to refer people to him, feel free to refer people to our office as well if they have any issues. I've talked with several people in Ohio County, uh, more towards Centertown as well uh, on that. Um, so I'm just here to listen and um, see what we can do to, to make sure everyone gets all the federal resources that are out there. It is a complicated process. Yeah, there was a new female lady come here today, spent quite a bit of time with Mary and Miranda, and uh, she's going to reach out to anybody that's ever complained to us about FEMA not take care of their claim correctly, she's going to reach out to every one of them. So that's a new person in town. Okay. Um, next we have a presenta presentation from St. Benedict's. They're going to talk to us about a possibility of that they and us going into partners to have a homeless shelter here in the county. And this was part of the ARPA committee too. Yes, this is ARPA, ARPA committee recommended it and they've already came and spoken to the ARPA committee. This would, this would be ARPA funds, not county, so if we do it, it would be ARPA funds and like I said, the ARPA committee, this is one thing we feel like money should be used for is to help people in need and I think that's what it was intended for by the uh, federal government. And so they're going to tell us what a partnership could look like. Well, thank you for having us. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be able to stand in front of a court, um, gentlemen like yourself. It's been really good having these conversations back and forth. It's our passion. My name is Harry Pettigrew. I'm the Executive Director of St. Benedict's Shelter. And just a little bit about St. Benedict's is we're one of the largest shelters in Western Kentucky, and we focus primarily on men. Men is our biggest facility. We house about 490 men a year that we encounter with. And that's a lot of guys. It is a lot of guys. Most of them are in and out within 30 days. You know, they just experience homelessness. Homelessness is really, you know, stigmatized. And most people, when they hear it, there's a lot of negative stereotypes that go with that. But it's just an experience. No different than one of us stomping our toe and experiencing that pain for an hour, a day, a couple of days. It's an experience. And so uh, us at St. Benedict's, we focus on emergency housing. That's what we focus on. Our mission is shelter social support services and a christian atmosphere <coughs> real simple in that we'll provide case management targeted case management which is specified to substance use issues severe mental illness severe emotional disorders we do drug and alcohol assessments we do, we have mental health partners that we work to address mental health needs uh, we do and participate in a rapid rehousing program which is phenomenal it's a state program literally if there is housing available they will pay somebody's rent to get them off the street for two to three years and walk with them through that process and so we have all these different programs that we do we have transitional housing programs not just for uh, individuals that are chronically homeless or transitioning from substance use facilities but those that are also veterans and so we really pride ourselves in what we do so when I got a call to come hey, speak to the to the judge and you magistrates well, you jump on that opportunity for a lot of reasons one I've been there 
You know, I've, I've been homeless myself. I know what that experience is like. <laughs> Two, I know what it takes to overcome that, and it takes relationships. So when I hear you, Judge, thanking Owensboro for coming down here and helping with the water, and I think, wow, that's nice, they're coming down and helping, and if we're coming down, like it's what it's about is working together. And so I commend y'all for even developing this ARPA committee and really trying to address these issues. One of the questions you'll probably have is how many people from Ohio County come to Owensboro? Well, I ran the numbers. The night I was here, Judge, I didn't have the exact numbers for this year. and the last year, 52 males from Ohio County had visited our facility. Now, I wanted to jump around and get the numbers for the women and the children, but that would take me getting information and demographics from all the other shelters in town, and I just didn't have the time to gather that information. But if you notice on these graphs, I brought these graphs for you because I really believe numbers are, they speak a lot of facts. You'll see this graph here. It's a pie chart. You'll see most of our, our population there in Owensboro are Davis County, Owensboro. Over 48% of those individuals. And then it breaks down into the, the more counties that we serve. Ohio County being the biggest one. And I say that to say that what y'all are doing and your focus is correct. Rural homelessness is totally different than metropolitan homelessness. It's not like Louisville and Indianapolis and California. It's different, right? These are individuals that they don't know where to go, so they may, you know, uh, house up with a family member that's really not a good relationship for them. It's not healthy, could be bad, could be holding them back. And so in doing this, you will, you will be able to reach those individuals. And I think you'll see that the need's probably bigger than what you're realizing at this point, because it does hide in plain sight. It does. If you look at the next, uh, the next chart, you'll see where most of those 52 individuals have came out of the, t the towns, most being Beaver Dam and Hartford. But you see they're coming from Whitesville, they're coming from Fordsville, Utica, Livermore, Cromwell, Centertown. And then I put the national demographics on here. These are, uh, at last year we had 460 individuals with 101 different zip codes. That tells you that people are going to travel. You're going to have this issue come with it. You're going to get people from out of town, from out of state, that will pass through here or come through here and stay. And, and that's okay because they move forward. So it's important for you to see that, that people will come from other places too. I mean, that's what's happening because a lot of the counties around us do not have services for the homeless. And so, you know, we don't turn them away. We just take them, we help them, we move them forward. We believe that if we can take a man in or a woman in, get her, get her on her feet and get her back out the door, she's going to help the next person do the same thing, and I truly believe that. So for the court, you're probably wondering, well, what's this mean? What's it look like if we were to, to go into it with St. Benedict's? How would this benefit Ohio County? Well. A lot of different ways, right? You'd be able to keep your citizens here in Ohio County, which is okay if they come to us, uh, but it would be good. I, I, know I talked to a guy the other day, and I have no idea how he heard me. He said, when's Ohio County getting a shelter? I'd like to go home. And I said, what? Because he does have some, some, uh, some mental issues, but he had heard me. And I said, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, but if they get one, I'm sure you can go home. So... You know, you do have your citizens that want to, they would rather be here than in Owens World. You know, it's a big adjustment. <clears throat> You'll notice I put a picture in there of a building, and she told me, she said, that's going to be a Domino's. I said, well, that's fine. But as I was going through Ohio County the other day, I stopped and took a picture of that building because that's about what it's going to take. That's a pretty good size facility. I'd say that's probably about 9,000 square feet. The reason I would say 9,000 square feet is it would give you room to grow. It would give you room to add different programs if needed besides just housing. We discussed last time, we discussed um, the possibilities of doing an overnight shelter. What does that look like? It would be open from 8 at night till 6 in the morning. You get them in, you give them a warm bed, a hot meal, and a hot shower, let them do their laundry. The next day they would have to go. You could do a 24-hour facility. In doing these different facilities, they have different they have different costs associated with them. 24-hour facility takes a lot of staffing. We do, we run, operate six facilities with 14 staff members, one of which is 24 hours a day. And we do it on about a $750,000 a year budget. We could operate an overnight shelter here in Ohio County if we had the right building, a hybrid model, men and women, 
for about 275, 300,000 a year. So it's something to think about and it's something to continue these conversations. I commend y'all, that's, that's a tough conversation to have. It is. So does anybody have any questions so far? I know I, I talk fast, uh, I get passionate, I get heated up about this stuff and energized. So of your budget each year, what, what actually comes from the court uh, in, in Davis County or the city of Owensboro? That's a great question. Uh, the city had decided a while back they were going to give their funds to United Way, and when that happened, we lost those funds. So if we want funds, we have to apply through them through United Way. United Way does what they do with those funds. Uh, so I think the city gives like 500000 to social services, and it goes to United Way. We get none of those funds. We did for a while. Their volunteer committee shifted funds around. Of our $750,000 a year budget, 90% comes from grant writing, fundraising, and individual contributions, corporate sponsorships. The fiscal court there gives us 2500 on their budget, but I'll give you an example. The year before that, they put a $30,000 sprinkler in our building. The year before that, they bought us two vans for like $30,000. If there's something we need, they step up and they just do it. And they, the reason I don't think that we get the funding that we should from them is because we're, we're in the city. Like, it should be a city's responsibility. If we're in the city, and the city's not, they're not, they've chose to go a different direction with their funding. So that's a good question. We do get 100000 a year through uh, the ESG funds, which is through Kentucky Housing Emergency Shelter Solutions Grant, um, and that helps out quite a bit too. So. So you said that if you had people from outside come in, uh, that you don't turn them down. What if you're at capacity or past capacity and you don't have space for them? That's a good question. So we typically have the resources to where if we need to put an individual in a hotel for a day or two to buy some time until we can get them in, that's what we'll do. Have we turned people away before? Absolutely. Uh, sometimes you just you have to do that. Um, in the facilities that we're in currently, we typically will put a cot on the floor and put them on a cot overnight. Yeah. Is that right, wrong, or indifferent? The fire marshal may tell you, hey, don't do that, but we believe we're going to do the best we can to help the individual. So. So would you share uh, among your facilities if you were full here and you had space in Owensboro or something like that? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think right now we've got maybe 10 in the facility out of the 65 that we have in our men's facility. I think 10 right now are from Ohio County, which, you know, it's not like if you opened up a place and just going to ship them all down here. That don't work that way. You know, we're not here to move people around. We're here to just help people. And, and if we can keep them where they want to be, then that's what we want to do, you know. Any other questions, concerns? Good. We really appreciate you uh, telling this, and we are, I think, going to speak for all of us. I know Jason and I were there with you the last time you spoke to us. And we're interested. We don't know exactly what we can do and what it looked like, but we're interested in it. Uh, and that's kind of what like, this is exploring. We're not really for sure. And that's letting you know that the $275,000 is not. And that's that's a good that's already established and everything we need. You know, we might not start that way. And it it's not coming from the county necessarily. I know you guys here saw that and think two hundred seventy five thousand. I don't know about that. Ours is to kind of help get up with a little bit of ARPA money to get it going. And then, like you said, they have they have a um, a committee or a, that that fundraises and, and approaches and writes grants for the rest of it. So, and so, I think Harry, if I remember, or let me rephrase that, here in Ohio County we have a lot of churches that will put people up in hotels and that's another avenue and I think you said that's something that you would do is reach out to all these churches and they would be able to just uh, make their monthly contribution there and not have these people coming to their church. Correct, and and we had discussed that, you know, this just getting this like a relationship to where we could we could get something going here, and then we can take it and do what we do. We we've got relationships with 200 churches around the counties, and then the Davis County alone that we work with, and they all contribute in some form, whether it's volunteering and cutting down labor costs, whether it's donating supplies and cutting down supply costs, whether it's donating contributions and if we can keep them from writing hotel vouchers, because you can't weed out who's who's playing the system and who's truly benefiting or who it's really hurting, you know? Sometimes them hotel vouchers hurt people. And and we can take that and 
and, uh, and and really put it to good use to where we're helping more than just that one, but a lot of people. So yeah, that's that's a lot of what we do is we well, establish those relationships. Our church used to have a line item. We used to have a, a little homeless shelter here, but it's not so. You know, there are churches that took care of it, but. Uh, what would the relate would the relationship be similar to what the boys and girls club do, and in, in that they would be an extension office or and uh, in, in have its own board, which would be underneath the bench. That's a good question. So we do have we're under the auspices of the diocese. Okay. Uh, we're our own entity. Um, they do our human resources and they manage our finances. But we have our own books, right? And so we have our own board of directors that freely can make any decisions they want to make. It would be like an extension, and we had talked about possibly having members of, of the court be a part of the board or having a direct <coughs> subcommittee off of that specifically for this, this area. And one of the other things that uh, I thought was really interesting is that if you did employ people, that is under your umbrella. The Correct. court would not be responsible for any of that, and through the diocese, I think you all get labor a little cheaper than we could. Well, we, I don't know about cheaper. <laughs> we can retain it because we, we offer benefits. We offer a 403B, we offer a pension, we offer medical insurance, dental insurance, life insurance. And so that alone, plus the culture that we foster amongst our staff, uh, we don't have a hard time keeping people to work. You know, they want to work and they want to be a part of, and it's very uh, rewarding. So yes, that's how that would, they what, would do, and they would be under us. What, what do you guys, what is the average pay? Um, it depends on what you're doing. So, so we've got social workers. Their their average pay is anywhere between thirty and forty thousand a year because they are licensed individuals. Uh, we have substance use counselors. Their pays vary between forty and fifty. Uh, our our typical staff that monitor and secure the facility is around ten dollars an hour or so, eleven dollars an hour plus the benefits, the pay time off. We have a lot of different benefits that come with that too. So. And do you guys help these, these folks who are going through the program to get jobs? That's a, that is a real good, we do. We actually, we do. Uh, we have a lot of employers that'll call us and send us stuff and we'll post it within the facility and allow them to go to work. We've got vehicles where we can transport. Um, you know, all this stuff, we try to identify these gaps and it would be different. We'll have different barriers here, right? You don't have, there's not a bus system. So then there's, how do you get people around and where do you put it at? How did they get there? So there's some, there's some gaps, but that's what we do. We figure out these gaps and we try to accommodate them. But not only do we get them jobs, we also allow them to participate in the facility, securing it, volunteering, keeping it clean. We want them to learn these skills and we want them to be accountable and responsible. You know, we don't just give a hand out. We're giving a hand up. If we're not doing that, then we're not helping you. That's correct. So I appreciate it. Like I said, we're interested. We'll stay in close touch. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, next thing we have, it's uh, on your agenda, it says personnel. Uh, I have one personnel issue. <clears throat> it's to, I put up the name Byron Swift at the animal shelter, at the shelter attendant, full time. 1242 an hour effective tomorrow and that's a roll call Miranda. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Hound? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Okay, the next thing I have well then the committee report but the first thing I want to bring up under there uh, uh, is uh, the wastewater board Joe Bennett, who retired from the Beaver Dam City, as I uh, worked in water and sewer there, and then he worked for the uh, Ohio County uh, Regional Wastewater Board, and and now he's retired from that, and he's agreed to serve on that uh, committee. So I put the name, I mean that board, uh, Joe Bennett for the Ohio County Wastewater Board. Miranda. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. Uh, next, we're going to have a close, sh a short presentation from the coroner's office. <coughs> Elvis has changed, did Yeah, he's grown <laughs> taller. <laughs> Don't tell him that. <laughs> 
Put Don, Don Pierce in the deputy corner. Yes. I wanted to come. Elvis and I both discussed it this afternoon, and he was unable to get here uh, in time for the meeting. But we wanted to kind of give you all the year in summary from 2021. I'll show you our Thank you, sir. overall activity and answer any questions that maybe you might have. Thank you, bud. Yes, Thank you. Um, overall, our total was down just a fraction from 2020. But as far as the incidents and the types of incidents, we're on an uptick. Um, Unfortunately, suicides in the county are climbing. Whether it's drug related or other means, uh, it's still an increase. We're up four from previous year. And um, it's just a sad scenario. I wish we could find an answer and solution to get to these folks before this occurs. The ones we hear um, call out for help or threaten are not the ones so much that we need to be concerned <coughs> much about as those we don't hear anything about. And that's one of my biggest goals and passions with the, with the office is to try to be proactive and not have to be reactive. I hear the call to Tracy and them get every day and it's mind-boggling to hear that many people are struggling. But um, of course we've had the one notable incident, which was early on uh, in the McHenry area that I've got listed on there. But otherwise, I mean, it's pretty much a rundown of facilities, health care at the hospital. Uh, facilities there is for the nursing homes in the county, the deaths that occurred there, the cremations that we've had, uh, six of which uh, calls were COVID. And you know, that's that's kind of a surprising number. I know there's probably more that's linked to the county, but as far as the ones that we actually investigated or had to go out on was six. We had 12 transports to Madisonville and six to Louisville. We're, we're hoping that that uh, trips to Louisville is going to cease a little bit or cut down quite a bit more because they're beginning to ramp up their facility in Madisonville. It's going to allow us a shorter term of transport to their back to keep us in the county. But now that there's three of us, we pretty much split ourselves between all areas of the county. We try to go in tandem as much as we can because we never know if we're going to have assistance, you know, through the ambulance service, being at the facility of where we're at to give us a hand. But um, if not, we're usually prepared with the two that we can handle it. So. Elvis and I take care of the north end and Forgeville area, and then Jamie and I take care of the south end and the rest of the county. So, but Elvis will come no matter what. He he's there. Anytime there's a call, he wants to be a part of it. And <coughs> we try to we try to split it up so it's not such a hardship and burden on one individual. Right. Is there any questions you guys may have for us? No, say for the first time in our history, we do have a mower which has we never do. been here before. We do. We're trying our best to uh, upgrade that and get a little bit more room involved there. Uh, we discussed earlier, you know, that we had a, a larger cooler on order. And because of <laughs> the supply and demand issue, uh, we've had to kind of put that on hold for a little bit. Nobody seems to can provide us anything with out of the 26, foot, uh, 26 week lead time. So um, until that gets better and we have more room for it to, to house it, then it's kind of not a good idea to go forward in a breakneck speed to get it right now. But we're still trying to find something that'll work for us and um, we use it a lot. What we have, we use a lot more than what we ever realized. With uh, people's finances, a lot of times they can't make arrangements quick enough, and so we'll have to hang on to them for a little while until they can do that. A lot of funeral homes won't take them. We're fortunate to have you guys. We appreciate the support you guys give us, and 
Since we can't give you more money, we're going to give you a wholehearted thank you. Well, we appreciate that. We take anything we can get. So, thank you. Anytime anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me or Elvis or Jamie. We can usually answer whatever, and if not, we'll get you the answers. Appreciate you always you, answer everything I ask. I Thank can't you. speak for the court, but there's one I appreciate the job you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Job. We appreciate it. Uh, it was something what y'all love to do. All they've asked us to do. Uh, we'll, we're not ready. We don't have all the investigation in on it. We're going to get more facts. I don't have any problem. Yeah, we're going to have to see what it's going to cost us. Um, Jody, will you give us a report on the uh, tornado relief that goes to the Beaver Dam Foundation? Jody and Miss Taylor, uh, Don Taylor, Don Taylor serve on an advisory committee through our office to the uh, Beaver Dam Foundation, who actually does gets the money and who actually strips it. Would you would you give us a report on how much has been collected, how much has been spent, how many people we've helped? Yeah, so uh, the total collected was $77,006.79. The total dispersed as of today was $68,600. The total remaining being $8,176.79. And the total number of individuals or families that have received checks from that fund are 139 families that's more than I knew about I mean I kind of kept up with it back before the last meeting and that's much more it helped more many than a lot more than I knew of and you collect a lot more money I knew of yeah uh, I also wanted to let you guys know while I'm up here and I have the mind uh, that we did receive the three hundred thousand dollar grant for the power expansion at bluegrass crossing so we will be um, beginning that as soon as the the state gives us the go ahead to uh, use those funds and disperses them uh, to start so we'll be at 9.5 megawatts at bluegrass crossings before the end of the year which puts us up from 3.5 megawatts so that's a win for us Good yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Thank you. You. great job on that are there other uh, committee reports of course, the uh, jail committee was sort of reported when we did that ordinance and things a while ago. Has there been any other committees reported to report? Um, we did have a great uh, road committee meeting this evening, but our number one item of business was sort of that we scheduled it for kind of took care of itself, and that was to clean up from the debris on the roadway, and uh, our road supervisor and his crew have stepped up, and. And the volunteers we got, uh, Joe helped secure. Uh, we were there, so we didn't have to talk about that in that meeting. So that committee doesn't really have to report. Any other committees being done? Go to the magistrates, let's go to uh, Sam Small. I have nothing good. Jason? No, thank you. Joe? No, thanks. Larry? No. Larry? I have nothing. All right. Uh, coronavirus update. Uh, We've become accepting it because we've all known life had to go on and we've gone on. But let me tell you, it hadn't left us. We had two people die of COVID in our county last week and we've had two already this week. So uh, since Friday, from Friday to Tuesday, we've had two. And the, and the, uh, in the past week between Tuesday and Friday, we had two. So that's not good, even, even though the uh, numbers on our cases are going down. For some reason, that particular one number is not going down. Uh, people are not getting as sick overall as they did before, but we still got some that do get very sick and die. So that's where we are on it, and the uh, governor's been talking to the judges every week, and he's very optimistic that we're looking at a better place soon. And uh, I hope his, his information is well informed. Uh, and uh, of course, I've been saying since the beginning of it that next month we're going to be much better off. Been saying that since uh, March of 2020. So uh, I'm still saying next month we're going to be a much better place. I hope you're right. Man. If no one else has anything else for the good of this body, we're going to stand adjourned. You may be taking care. Yeah. I've got to go down. I learned your face. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. <laughs> 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 oh, thanks
I'll give you a phone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.